Hi, I'm Bernadette Cheney from Old Navy's design team. Want to turn some heads at Easter brunch this year? Then come into Old Navy where our new line of spring dresses in fresh floral prints, stripes, and vibrant colors will have you looking and feeling as festive as the day. And now through Monday at Old Navy's Easter weekend sale, get the whole fam looking great with up to 50% off store wide. Dresses and shorts from $15 for adults, 12 for kids, plus tees from just 5 bucks. So hop into Old Navy. Bell 323 to 328, select styles. Love Talk Radio. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Kingdom Justice. And this is your host, Courtney Jones, speaking. And we are back. Now, um, it's been a little while since I've been on here. And, uh, you know, and today, you know, I was just looking at, you know, going through, looking at all the shows that we've done and, um, you know, just looking at all the shows that we've done in a short period, you know, a short period of time. And I remember starting the show, starting the radio show. When we first started the radio show ministry. I remember just, uh, you know, I think like a year and a half ago. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't know if it was that long, you know, but somewhere around that. And um, we had so many different shows uh, that we did. And like I said, you know, um, I, I enjoyed doing the show. I enjoyed it. Uh, when you know we had the time to do it, I enjoyed it when God allowed us to do it, and it was um, it was a very great learning experience because you know as I was learning, as I was going forth, and as I was learning, um, as I was going forth, and as I was learning, um, you know, day to day, week to week, uh, so was everybody else, and um, you know one of the things I tell everybody that come watch and listen to our show, some of our you know the things, the mysteries, the things that God. I've spoken unto us the things that we've been through. Um, I tell everybody all the time, hey, listen, you need to have a personal relationship with God. You need to question these things, and you need to ask God about these things because we can say some things, and, and, and we can say those things, and if you don't understand those things, then we don't want you to, to we don't want you to judge in yourself in the wrong manner. We want you to judge by the Holy Spirit. So we want you to, because the Holy Spirit can take those that we minister and he can take you deeper and farther. You know, sometimes stuff, people can say, well, this didn't make sense, and that didn't make sense. I don't understand. And they or they can say, well, I get what that means. And, 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 and it goes further than that. I tell people all the time, listen, it's like a well that's constantly pushing water, that's constantly flowing. Um, when you get a revelation, revelation, that's what it is. Why Jesus even referred to it as being, a, a, you know, a spring of water that keeps going forth, you know, um, and, and that, you know, and that's how God do things. It goes deeper and deeper and deeper. You know, for instance, God can tell you, uh, sometimes God tell you about uh, a specific animal, like God tell you about a cow. All of a sudden, he tell you about a cow, a goat, a lamb, and then all of a sudden you find out what? Well, you know what? You do research on a lamb, you find out that when a lamb gets sheared, when they cutting off, the, you know, the lamb uh, fur, when they cutting off, you know, all his wool, his fur, and everything else off of him, you find out that he 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 don't fight, you know. Even when he go to the slaughter, when they uh, sacrifice a lamb or kill a lamb, he don't really fight. Uh, he cries, and so notice it said like Jesus is gonna be like a lamb to the slaughter. He's gonna you know just like the lamb. Then you start looking deeper into the lamb. You start learning about why God was talking about sacrificing different animals. How he said that how he refusing certain animals like pig, even though it chew the cud. Then you start understanding that some of these animals had. Uh, you know, four chambers in their stomach. And we go to the four chambers and go to the four faces of God. See, and so th- notice how it's constantly go, 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 go. And you're going from one thing to another to another, and then you start seeing the the flesh of it. You start seeing the physical interpretation of what God used for spiritual reasons. So you start seeing the physical interpretation, then you start seeing the bone. The bone means the spirit. So you start seeing those interpretations uh, and, and how God meant it in the spirit. And you know, like I said, so it's some things sometimes people can get and they can and, and they may not get. And, you know, we would always say it on here, hey, go ask God, go question that, you know, because some people will hear stuff that they never heard. Like when we start talking about the seven spirits and then we not to the seven spirits, we went into more spirits. And, you know, at this time, I haven't even got a chance to share completely about we, we, we talked about Balaam. We talked a little bit uh, what God allowed me to at that time about uh, Korah. And how the spirit of Korah went even further, and how to get rid of the spirit of Korah, uh, Korah, if I'm saying his name correctly, uh, how to get rid of that spirit of submitting to God. 
you know, submitting to God, staying true to God is how you get rid of the spirit uh, of that spirit. Um, that's pretty much how you get rid of that spirit because that, the whole thing in that spirit does not want to make a sacrifice. They want to rule. Um, and so we went on, we were talking about that, um, that spirit, but also talking about how it went into Eve. And we was going on that, and if you can go check that teaching out, of course, like check all these teachings I'm talking about in case you're new here and you didn't really, you know, get into it or uh, don't know. But we were talking about those spirits, and uh, we, we didn't really get a chance to talk about just the spirit of Cain, but all seven of those spirits all go into Cain. And so we didn't get a chance to really, you know, talk about, you know, the spirit of Cain, also the horsemen, also the horsemen of God. We didn't get a chance to really talk about those things. And, um, you know, uh, I seen other people came out and they were talking about some of the things about the horsemen. Some of them went a little in detail. Some of them did not go really in detail. Uh, I know of my cousin that God was bringing me and him both through um, these trials at the same time. And I noticed that even him, uh, he was able to, you know, preach. I know he, he was doing like uh, prison ministry and this, and I know he was, was able to go into God, allow him to go into the horsemen and talking about that and some of the prison ministries and, and some of the things he was doing. Uh, but God didn't allow me at that time to talk about, to go in deep in the horsemen. But I see nowadays a lot of guys are actually talking about the horsemen. So let's just pray to God that he allowed us to go kind of talk about the horsemen. Uh, I've seen some guys, I heard, you know, talk about it good, and I heard some guys who kind of off base. But that's usually what happened, you know, when the revelation of God, when God finally opened up that floodgate and let that comes out, um, that, that mystery comes out that he has been not letting come out, then all of a sudden the vultures come in. All of a sudden, you know, the, the devil got his contingency plan. So all of a sudden when, when somebody starts coming out with God, all So, like I was saying before, I was like, you know, I was kind of cut off here. I don't know, some having some kind of problems with this. Um, we had some of those things happen. I remember uh, we had a couple of times we had uh, got disconnected back then quite a bit. Um, you know, we have the best internet connection, the best thing that we need to have, uh, the equipment and everything. But, uh, you know, sometimes we have stuff like that happen to us. Um, we speak about certain things. Uh, I remember um, we were told doing the parasite teaching, and um, at the same time we had two shows. We was doing a show here, and we was doing a show another radio um, that we was doing just temporary and briefly on that. But we was doing both because God wanted for us to preach about the parasite as long uh, along with the Jebusite. So what I did when I was on Red to Block Talk here, I was using, I was talk preaching about the Jebusite, but I was also going somewhere else and I was preaching about the parasite at the same time. Uh, and man, parasite teaching, it was so powerful. and It was so much interference with the Jebusite teaching. I'm talking about the Jebusite spirit. Like I said, um, one of the things it did do was able to control electronics and man, it would knock out electronics. Um, it was able to deal with electronics and stuff to that nature. And I mean, it was taking out electronics, your computer would cut off, cut off. And, uh, man, it was stuff like that was happening to uh, me. And I remember my cousin, he was doing a radio, his radio show and he was doing the same and, it was happening to him, and I was seeing how it was so much like interference, trying to interfere with the teaching, uh, the teaching and everything. So <laughs> we was having those kind of issues, man, and uh, it was just crazy. It was crazy, and uh, it was one of those experiences that was unreal experience. Uh, but it happened, and um, we was able to get it out. You know, and I, I always wanted to. I was asking God that I would like to go and do the parasite teaching even over uh and it's because it was so much interference into it um but god didn't really you know um he didn't say too much about me doing it over but i'm sure he will let me do it over but um uh, we can go a little bit more into it uh you know like i said we went through that first wave of it we learned a whole lot more so maybe god let us go a little bit more into it but it, it was i mean it was a powerful teaching and like i said it was powerful teaching but what i was saying before i got cut off and Hopefully I don't get cut off this time, but I was talking about the horsemen and these things of this nature. And I was just saying that, you know, how when, like we were doing the spirits, you know, it was, wasn't too many people talking about the spirits. I know there was a couple of men, guys out there who was talking about it. Someone, someone was on point telling the truth and some guys was, you know, maybe all over the place, but um, it wasn't too many people. And then God brought that to us and we was able to, uh, he, he, he took us through it and, 
we was able to teach about it, and we was teaching whatever he allowed us to teach. And uh, he was, we was teaching certain things that he allowed us to teach. And that's why I always tell people, you know, it's best for you to get the relationship with God, it's best for you to go through, uh, follow Jesus where he went and you go, you know, because when you do that, you know, it's a lot of stuff that people can say. You know, you remember Paul, Paul spoke about this all the time. He was telling, um, you know, people in his churches that all the time where he was saying that, hey, you know what, certain things we speak among each other that we don't speak to y'all, meaning that because they was more older, they was what you call mature offspring. Uh, sons of God, they, they they was on a different level, and so they couldn't speak certain things to people who was, you know, in the lower levels, people that still drinking milk, people that wasn't growing, um, and certain things that they couldn't, you know, preach to them, and Jesus said the same thing to the disciples. He said, everything the Father told me, he said, I told y'all, and notice then Jesus turned around later on and said to them, I want to tell you but you couldn't handle it now. So why would Jesus tell them, why would every sound like he'd been hypocrisy? Why would he say one thing like, I told you everything, but then another one he said, there's a lot of things I like to tell you, but I couldn't because you couldn't handle it. Because what Jesus is saying is that he was able to tell them everything the Father let him tell them, everything the Father gave him to give them. But it's stuff that he knew that he could not tell because they, they was not on that level. And... They just can't tell them because they couldn't bear them right now. So people got to understand that, that this is why it's so important for you to strengthen your walk with God and go through the same things and learn things because there's going to be things that, you know what, I can tell you. You're going to have to learn on your own. You're going to have to learn because there are things that are unspeakable, and you're going to have to learn those things from God. And it goes on to other people. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's, there's other ministers out there or other people that God is using out there. That is certain things that they can, God, they preaching what God allowed them to do, certain things that they can't preach. And that's why it's so, 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 so serious for people, for every, every individual to want to have their relationship and want to go through the system of God so they can get to that level. And those things that those preachers can't preach, they can understand, they can get those, those things, those mysteries just as well, because it's, God no respect of persons. If you want to do it, that's what it is. <clears throat> so, like I said, we 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 been through, like I said, a lot of these teachings. And before I was talking about how the mainstream, how people in the mainstream sometimes they take advantage of certain things because they can, because they can start a fashion, and everybody will start hitting off that fashion because it seems like it's been very prosperous. And uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about, we were talking about the different spirits and different things like that. I was talking about like the spirit of Cain. Uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about that, but just briefly, I'm just going to say the spirit of Cain, there's a lot of people that are affected with that spirit of Cain. You know, um, we see the same thing when it comes to Esau. You know, it goes from being the spirit of Cain, then it goes down to Esau was affected by the spirit of Cain, and then it goes on from them all the way down the, the line. Uh, it goes down, you know, it goes down the line. And when it comes down, when it comes down to a lot of these things, is that the thing about Cain is Cain did not want to make a sacrifice. Not just so, there's not just he didn't want to make a sacrifice for others. So the whole sacrifice that you must make, the same one Jesus made, where he lied down his life for others. You know, and notice how Jesus died daily. So therefore, he died daily because he did die daily before he died on the cross. Notice how he did that to get the abilities and the gifts and the anointing that he had. And notice how he took that anointing, he gave that to the disciples, he spread it. Um, he also, we, we also know he literally laid his life down physically and spiritually. He laid it down so therefore others can grow. Um, that's what all of us have to do. We all have to have, uh, understand that we are all redeemers. We all are redeemers. Another thing redeemers is that say that we are restorators. You know, we all have the ability to God work through us to have restoration. Uh, we all have the ability to help restorate others. And that calls, that calls for, uh, that's called for a, a sacrifice. Uh, that's called for us to lay down um, ourselves. And what that means laying down, like we talked about this before, uh, sacrifice means sacrifice to the senses. That means that you're not trying to learn off the soul or the flesh uh, way of thinking. You're only going by the Spirit of God. That means that whatever you think you know, you need to forget what you know and learn only from the Spirit of God. Even if you think that it's true, you still need to learn completely from the Spirit of God. Face-to-face, -face, you know, you need to learn 
um, you know, not just bits and pieces that you know as you keep going. The goal is to get to the point where God <clears throat> can talk to you in completionism. The way I'm talking to you now, you and him like this all the time, and you can get to that level of being complete where God can straighten out all these things, all these uh, these thorns in the way. God can straighten all these things out for you. And that's what the goal, that's why Paul said that, you know, that's what that's what he was looking forward to, that no more this, you know, we, 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 we just see a little piece in this, but we get the whole the whole thing. We see God in himself, not just the backside like Moses did. Moses only seen the backside. We see there's a lot of people who, who like that too. They just want to see the backside of God. And it's not good to want to see the backside because the backside can't get in the gate. And that's why Moses couldn't get in the gate because he only can see the backside of God. You don't see the backside because to see the face of God, it takes what? Dying. And not just dying, it takes dying for others. And notice that he couldn't, Moses um, couldn't see the face of God because he only seen the backside. Because notice God said, if you see, you would die. And he wasn't talking about physically dying. He was talking about you would die to your flesh, to the senses. You would sacrifice your flesh. That's the whole thing of circumcision. God was talking about sacrificing the flesh. Um, they thought, they looked at it all wrong. They looking at it as you got to start. Start looking. That's what physical circumcision they was doing wrong. They were trying to cut sin out, and sin was not something that was on the outside. It was something that was growing on the inside, and that's why Jesus said the sins don't come out of the outside of a man; they come on the inside. But people start taking, you know, that's like when you see a story of Elijah, and when he was trying to take out the bell priest. Notice that they start cutting themselves, and bell, bell, and they screaming bell, cutting themselves because they were trying to cut out, you know. They're trying to cut out the sin, cut out the flesh, trying to make the blood run. They're trying to do all that. And that wasn't a sacrifice that was acceptable. So notice how Elijah sat there, and Elijah was trying to give the sacrifice that was acceptable. And um, that, that's, that's what that's about. You know, when, when people start trying to kind of get caught into rules, you know, they get caught into rules because it's too hard for them to make things follow God. So they need God to give them a list of things to do. Um, that's what the, you know, Trent Israel did, of course, with, uh, Moses, they say, Moses, you go up there and see God, you know, you go deal with God. We do And you just tell us what he said. No, they want him to come down and write down what God said. And we'll, we'll do that. But that's not how God actually wanted to work. God wanted to work in your everyday life. God wanted to tell you something maybe different every day. God wanted to God. God wanted to become your mind. See, God wanted to think for you. He wanted to become your mind. He wants to become your thoughts. He don't want just you write a list down and you just try to follow this list and think that's all it is. That's not how God wanted to do that. God wanted to be your, he wanted to take the place, you know, the whole mind of Christ is that God was his thoughts. God took the place of his mind. So you worry about your physical mind, but God took the place of your mind where he become those thoughts. He become your emotions. He, he you know, he, he, he give your desires. You start feeling his desires, your heart become his, he, you know, and, and y'all become one. And so that's what God, that's what God intended to, and that's what the people that stuck on the law to this day don't get, is that they're trying to do these works and trying to do these things, and they're trying to follow a list. And that's not, that's not the complete glory of God. God, God lived among his people. He lived in his people. His kingdom is in his people, you know, and what, what, what they don't understand is that his kingdom is in his people. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to follow these rules, hoping that one day I'll be good enough. And when I die, uh, God allow me in here and, and, and I get in here. God say, oh, you know, I'm justified. And, and, and you can't be justified that way. Uh, you only can be justified through the spirit of God, through the spirit. And that's why Jesus told the rich man, hey, you got to let that kind of notice. Even the rich man following the law, he said, OK, he did. He, he, Jesus had me, uh, the rich man named Jesus named six of them. The man said he was doing them all. And Jesus said, okay, you want to be justified? Now come build up, you know, treasure in the kingdom. Okay. Okay, so, like I was saying, um, like I was saying, we was, uh, uh, you know, we ain't been on here in a little while, and, um, so we having these kind of little problems. I don't know technical problems. So maybe this conversation is uh, uh, I don't know what's happening with the internet with that. Um, we had no problems before, and we on here. Like I said, we was on here to have a conversation, going back through some of the things that we learned, add on some of the things to help uh, you know people 
on here. And, you know, it's one of the things, you know, I always wanted to do. And uh, you always want to get people to grow and help them go to another level uh, to make them question things. I always tell everybody question things, I man, you know, question, even if you think, you know, question that, go ask God, question those things, you know, pray to the Holy Spirit that, hey, you know, pray to the Holy Spirit, hey, listen, Holy Spirit, put in me questions that I would not ask. I would not imagine their acts. Questions that I wouldn't ask because I'd be too afraid or people that you're not supposed to ask. Um, ask the Holy Spirit those questions, you know, to, to put that on your heart. Now, all of a sudden, you start having stuff come into you that you think that, you know, religious people say you don't say, you don't ask, you don't do that. You know, uh, pastors, the preacher telling you, leave it to us, you don't do that. And all of a sudden, you start asking those questions, and God will start bringing them to your heart. And then you will start asking them questions to God, and he'll start answering them. And then you'll start to, you know, people start to see that, hey, man, hold on. I thought we weren't supposed to question this. I thought we weren't supposed to ask that, you know, and th those are things that God put in me. Those are prayers God put in me, and those are questions. God started asking me to ask the impossible question, questions that I wouldn't, you know, I, you, 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 your, your conscience wouldn't even ask, you know, and then all of a sudden stuff would come to you that you wouldn't even dare think to ask or even thought about asking, you know, not just – you know, it was blasphemy, you would say, but not that. It, it was just questions where you wouldn't even think about, you know, saying. And so um, that's one of the things you can use as a tool because, like I said, we want you to grow. And I just pray for the ones on here who come out, the elect that comes out, who use this, will actually use those things. Because a lot of times you got people who are looking for big revelation. They're looking for big mysteries, big revelations all the time. And there's nothing wrong with that. But like I said, it's the little things, you know. It's the little things that people don't pick up on, like what I just said, that little thing there. Where I said it seemed like it's so small, but it's so big because it opened up so much and it can take your growth level so so further um, than what it is. Because like I said, you know, a lot of folks just want to get born again to say I'm saved, but they have to grow up. And that's what that's about. It's not about – hey, you know, you uh, get, you got saved that you're going to hell. So the whole thing of you going to go to hell, that's out the window in that. But your calling can go there, meaning that you may not go there, but the, the purpose that Jesus had written for your life, the purpose that what he had for your life to carry out his purpose and his will, what happened now is that you have lost that will. You have lost that purpose. But, yeah, you, when you, you'll go to heaven. That's like, you know, you'll go to heaven. Uh, but you notice your, that the whole purpose that God wanted to use your life for, every 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 day, every minute, the causes of uh, I mean the the things that He wanted to do in your life to help others, the thing He wanted to do in your life to manifest uh, His glory through you, um, to clean up the atmosphere, to 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 do things that would never happen now. So now you're in a situation where you like one of those people. Like remember the guy who was on the cross when they had the two guys. Uh, on the cross with Jesus, and notice how the one guy, he was saved. He said, he, you know, he told Jesus, accept me in the paradise, and Jesus said, oh, well, you will be with me in paradise. But notice that that guy was finna to die. His life was over. His spiritual calling, what God wanted his life to be, is done. It's over for him. Yeah, he going to paradise with Jesus, but he, but when he was on earth and what he was supposed to fulfill, he spun being a thief and a robber. And so notice that even though he was forgiven of that, he was going to go to heaven through Jesus, but that's not what God wanted for him. God wanted for his life to mean something. For God wanted to use him, uh, to, uh, to use him and to give him a uh, calling to work his glory through him. God wanted to use him as a temple. And that's another thing when we talk about the temple is that people must understand that's the body. You know, a lot of folks right now got houses in the, in the eyes of God. They're homeless. You know, they're homeless. I remember God was telling me about the homeless. And if God allowed me to say this, but he was talking about the homeless. And God was telling me, I was talking to God about this, and God had told me at a point in time, he said, listen, uh, take money and go give it to um, the homeless, the widow. He said, go give it to the homeless, the widow. And uh, it was homeless, the widow, and the orphan. And I remember because I had with money trouble. I said, God, my money is not, you know, right now. And God said, listen, go take the money you got, take some money out, and go give it to the orphan, the widow. And uh, the orphan, the widow, uh, and the homeless. And I thought to myself, okay, you know, I said, okay, God, I do that. 
And I did it, and you know what? When I did that, my, of course, my finances started to increase, and then God told me, don't turn from that. So notice, it, but that, that's the physical manifestation of that. So I don't want people to think, uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't do that, but I'm just saying I don't want you to think that that's all what God meant, because that's just the physical portion of it, meaning that that's the flesh, like the flesh and bone, where that's the flesh part of it, that's the natural part. That's the way how God wanted certain things to operate on earth. So he wanted. Okay, so this is what I was I got cut off again. This is what I was trying to say. So I was saying God was explaining to me about, you know, for the homeless. And this is what he was saying about the homeless. And I went into, before I got hung up, about how it goes in the first king about Solomon. Solomon built the temple of God. Then after he built a temple, he said when he was in the temple, he built a home. He built a temple first, then it was a home. What people got to understand is that God is very abdomen about this. God talks about this all through Scripture. Uh, especially in Zephaniah and these things where God tells them they people building their own homes, they're not worrying about building his home, I mean his temple, his sanctuary, which is you. Um, this is what people wasn't worried about. They were too busy trying to, everybody trying to do their own thing, build their own stuff. You know, they, they worried about getting their own home, but they wasn't worried about building uh, the temple of God, meaning themselves. They're not worried about doing that. Uh, notice how Jesus walked around, he was the temple. And notice how you supposed to be the temple. Uh, not saying God's in there, but actually let God grow up, grow up in there, to actually get God rule in there. And so this is what God was showing homeless people. Are. People who do not, people who do not come to God and invest and let God build up the temple. Building up the temple is another way of saying building up in a new man, growing in the knowledge of the new man every day, learning from the new, you know, learning about the new man growing up. That's also the major part of building the temple, letting God build you up, let God build up in you and understand that not just he's in your body, uh, but knowing that he's ruling in there and that's his sanctuary. And when you do that, then therefore notice that it, but God gives you a home. Yeah, uh, you, you don't be homeless anymore. Now something you put that for God, God build a home for you. And that's why Jesus said he that, you know, Jesus said he that followed my commandments, him and my father and me both will come make a home with him. So when a person doing that, that's when you'll see that manifest, not just saying I received that in me, but when not like people say, I believe receive, not even receiving in you when you actually doing it, when you actually allowing God to do that. And when you do that, you letting God, you are the temple, the vessel, then God is going to build up in that. And you, and like I said, that God will create that home for you and you will have that home who, who don't do that in the eyes of God is homeless. So when people sit there and do that, you know, even though they got a house, um, physically, they homeless in the eyes of God because they have not built the temple. They have not let God build that temple up in them. And first, he have to tear down that. He got to tear down that temple. He got to tear down that temple. Mean he got to tear down their paradigm. He got to tear down their their the way they think. That all the things they've been taught since they were kids from different people, all the different, uh, you know. So, like I was saying. All that stuff comes from people in different traditions and things people learn. Um, a lot of times people get that, you know, mixed up a little bit um, with traditions. Like I said, when they, they like to they like to refer to anytime anything got to do with God, uh, whether you know, especially God judgment on how people need to turn from certain things and walk in the walk in the light. People were very quickly turn very quickly and say, oh, well, you know what? That's just for tradition, religion. And they so quick to use that word as a safe word. And but the truth is, all those different things that people grew up to, you know, little things here and there that they grew up to, things that they accepted. Maybe grandma said, uncle said, cousin said, the TV said. There's all that, and that, and that makes up that person's mind who they are. And so they got to let all that go. Follow Jesus. Got to give up all that riches, and let all those things go, and those desires, and um to follow him. And, um, you know, they got to give up all those things. And sometimes, you know, some people don't want to, they want to hang on, you know, but we're, we're of the elect. We don't want to hang on. We want to let go and we want to grow. So like I said, that's what we was talking about the temple and that's what God want to build us up in. So if you have a person that you're going through those things that's out there, you see that's happening to you, you're on the right track, you're on the right road, you're hitting the target. Uh, you where you're supposed to be, you see. 
And it's for us that's elect, that there's some of us who are more mature and some that's even more mature to help the others, to help encourage the others and let them understand that, hey, we on that, we, we've been on that road or we was there or we going, um, are we going further? And so th- those are things that, you know, we're here for, and that's what we want to do, to help, you know, motivate and to encourage, to keep going on further and further, and then let them know that they're not the only ones in the world, because let's be realistic. Uh, sometimes in this, when you follow God, sometimes it's things that happen. Uh, sometimes people may start off with five friends and you end up with none. It's just you by yourself. It's just you and God. And that can happen. You see, Jesus was like that, too. When he started off with the 12, and then he had the 72, and then all of a sudden it's just the 12, and then all of a sudden he was him by himself. It's him and God um, going to the cross, you know, it's him and God. So, you know, that that can happen to you. And you can have, just like Job, you can have your own family turn against you. You can have people that's, you know, next to you, and you think that's there for you. And like I said, God divide people. You know, God divide the wheat from the tares. And it's, that that's no joke. That's for real. God divides the wheat from the tares. And, you know, the, and it's, no, it, it, it's no joke in that. Um, it's people that, you know what, they say, I'm with you in God. I'm with you. And then all of a sudden, you remember that happened to Paul. People Paul thought he was, was with them. People that Paul vouched for that thought that this person would meet to the end. And you know what? Soon when persecution hit, soon when discomfort hit, soon when a person started being challenged, they're being judged, challenged, and discomfort. Um, soon when they started to see suffering happen, persecution, Soon when they start seeing that, it's, it, it, you know, they're being tested, they're just up and they'll take off and leave a person like that. And then there's people that go off to, like I said, some people go off to, hey, you know what? I got marriages I want to go off to. People who are, you know, what? I want to go off to businesses. It's people, that is true statements. That was true statements that happen. And it's people that do that. They rather go focus on their own business and not focus on God business. So, you know, we, we see that happen quite often, and there's a lot of ministers that actually preach these things to motivate these things. So, you know, they preach these things, um, these teachings. Because being a teacher and a preacher is a very serious thing. You know, people don't pay attention to that. That they also refer to the teachers being an archer. An archer like an archer. You know, that's what sin means, missing the target. You know, hitting. And what a teacher teaching means is an archer. So when you have a person who sinning, missing the target because he's coming from the the wrong teaching, the tea person teaching the person the wrong technique, and they're missing the target every time. So when they have these ministers who constantly preach into the flesh of people, flesh needs, the needs of the flesh, and needs of physical blessing, and these people don't have even grew up, they haven't even grew up in the spirit. These people are still drinking milk, and they ain't even drinking milk. They're not even doing that. They, they're like kids that have a disease where they're not growing. And this is what has happened. These, they are infected with the disease where they're not growing. And then the ones are crippled, deaf, and dumb. And this is what happens. And so these ministers are to preaching to their physical needs to make them feel like they're growing up with physical possessions and blessings of that nature. And they're forgetting the spiritual, um, their spiritual growth. They need to grow in a new man. They worry about already trying to jump up. They're already worried about trying to jump up and get the physical blessings and trying to prosper in the physical that they forgot about prospering in the spiritual, meaning that they're not trying to gather treasures in the kingdom. They're already trying to, you know, gather treasures in the physical. And a lot of times these ministers motivate this because the more treasures they gather, the more they, they're going to give to his pocketbook. So those things happen like that. And, and, and like I said, that's a more of an accepting uh, gospel to hear. And like I said, a person must grow up spiritually. As all those things will be given to you. It's like Jesus told you, seek the kingdom for his kingdom is. Level and try to just go, you're trying to go into the, how can I physically do this? How can I gain this? How can I do this? Then all they're doing is trying to get physical gain. And when they're trying to just do physical gain, they're using even their blessing and their gift for their own personal physical gain. And they're using it for themselves. And when they're doing that, they're operating in the spirit of Balaam. That's what Balaam did. That's why Peter said, I'm going to, a lot of them going on the ways of Balaam. And see, that's when you start using your gift and your benefits that God's given you, that blessing, you're using for your own personal reasons. And you're doing it for your own self to stack up your own wealth. And that's not the way it's supposed to be done. You're operating in the wrong spirit there. That's not the spirit of God. 
of the spirit of Balaam. And so when people are operating like that, this is what you see is happening. And this, and, and, and you know why that happened? Because they don't, they have not learned to grow up to know this and know that, okay, I'm not supposed to use this unless apart from God. That's why Abraham had to learn that lesson. And Abraham say, only God can make me rich. And that's how Abraham said, only God can make me rich. Because he knew, he found out, you know, that lesson. He had did that, and he found out that lesson that, you know what, uh, God just gave him a great victory. Notice that God blessed him with a gift and gave him a victory, and he won, and he won this war. And notice how he wouldn't take anything from that victory. He wouldn't use that victory, that gift, for his own personal gain, to get that all the money and everything he could have got to plunder. He said, no, I will not do this, because he did not want to operate in the spirit of Balaam. He didn't want to. He wouldn't want to use that for his own personal needs, like that, because he he knew that God's going to make me rich. I don't have to do that. But what they're doing is they're trying to get people to use their gifts, and use their ability, use their blessing that God has on a uh, on them. They're trying to use that for their own physical purposes to get, to gather more physical wealth. And when they're doing that, they're not being blessed just by God. They're happy to be blessed by God. They're operating in the spirit of Balaam, and that's what that's why Peter said many of them going in the going in the spirit of Balaam. They're they're going in the ways of Balaam, and that's what happens. And like I said, these these a lot of these ministers out here are not letting these people grow up in the spirit. They're not taking them up to the spirit. They're not letting that happen, and and letting these people systematically go through the system and grow up. They're just so quick not to take them to the spirit first, taking them to the flesh. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to take them to the flesh and the physical wealth, not the spiritual treasure, but the physical wealth. And they're trying to take them there and let them get all that stuff. And then they get rotten by it. And then they constantly get addicted to trying to use it. And then they never grow up in the spirit. Then they find out that they the church that Jesus talk about. Oh, you rich. Like Jesus, oh, yeah, you rich. You know, you got rich. You got all this money. You got all this. You prosperous. But you should have bought. these things. See, now you that church, but you thought that you were so rich. You thought you see because you did not grow up. And so, like I said, they, that's, that's exactly what this day and age we see a lot is growing in these teachings. They're not taking these people to the spirit of God, and these people need to learn how to grow up. You know, it's like they're babies. They're babies. They need to grow up and put mature offspring. They're not teaching them that. They're just jumping the gun and trying to deal with their fleshly needs. And giving them these Canaanite preachings to please them and turning around and giving them, the, you know, uh, letting them give them money back. They get personal gain. And that's not how it's supposed to work. And like I said before, God have a serious purpose for your life. You need to grow up. Everyone has to grow up. And like I said before, spiritually, they have to grow up. I don't mean that, you know what, I used to do this, but now I do. I'm, no, I'm talking about you need to grow up spiritually. You need to grow up seriously, spiritually. You need to grow up just like you grew up physically. You need to grow up spiritually, you see, and that's what counts most, and that's what you should do first, you see, and then after that, all those things will be given unto you. Then God will show you those things, and those things will be given unto you the right way. Then you'll be using the blessing in the right way. You'll be using your gifts in the right way. You see, you'll be you'll be on you'll be on one accord in the right way, but but when you jump the gun and do it like that, then what happens? You get trapped into you get trapped into uh, into into this vortex that's sucking you in, and all of a sudden everything is flesh and soul, flesh and soul. And then all of a sudden everybody come to church every week to find out what God owed them, and they forget the fact of the matter that they're of the vessel. They forget the fact of the matter of that they're legions. Of God, they forget the fact that matter it was bought with a purchase of Jesus' blood, and this work could be done. And you need to grow up as a mature son and an offspring. It's not about you dying; it's about you doing it now. It's not about you physically dying and say one day I'll be in heaven. And that's not what that's about. And you and, and you squander off all all your years here, and then say one day I'm in heaven. That's it's all fine. That's not what that's about. That's not what that's about, and that should never be taken that way. You should never be waiting to die. One day when I die, finally, when I physically die and I'm in the grave, you know, I see heaven and everything will be just perfect. It's like the kingdom is here now in you. Open up the kingdom. Go inside the kingdom. Let the kingdom come forth in you. Let that happen. 
you know, to sit back and wait and wait to die for something to happen is it, 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 it's, it's the stupidest thing in the world. It's the most biggest of self. was next to Jesus that said, oh, you know, I'm going to paradise. Yeah, you're going to paradise, but what good are you? What good was you? Because God could not use you in the time and the years you was here. God could have used him. He could have lived much longer, and he would have did what needed to be done. But notice that he couldn't even do that. He, he squandered off his, his time, and that's what people are doing. They're squandering off their time, worrying about their own desires, worrying about the flesh and survival and how to survive better on the earth and how to get more of this or how to get more education, how to do all this. And they have not got spiritual education. They have not increased in the word. They have not increased in the spirit of God. This is the problem that happens all the time. And it's happening so much. You see, and people thinking that, well, when I go to heaven, it's okay. But you want to wear that big S on your head to say shame. You want to feel like, Hey, you know what? You want to sit in front of God and say, you know what? I squander my whole calling. And, and you got that big S on your face, your head. Uh, big elf said I was a failure, and I fell for the okie doke. But like I said, us guardy legs, we don't fail in that. We are not going to wear. We don't want to wear that S on our head in front of God when it comes to that. You see, we don't want to do that here. We want to go all the way, and we understand that it's challenges. We understand that it's persecution can occur. We understand it's things of that nature, but we go forward. We go forward because we will prevail. That's what we do here. That's what we do. That's what all God elect does, regardless if, you know, we're affiliated with them, uh, not physically, we're affiliated with them spiritually. That's what they all do. We're going to go forward, and we're going to push on, and we're going to win, and we're going to constantly win. And just because we see, you know, like I said, these, these blind archers, teachers out there, shooting arrows all over the place, missing the target, and got everybody else uh, that's around them shooting arrows, missing the target. We are going to keep on. We're going to hit the target. We're going to keep hitting the target, and we're going to bring others, and God's going to manifest work through us to bring others to hit the target. And, you know, that, that's, all that, that's all that matters, you know, and that's what we're going to do. And like I said before, um, all this stuff that goes on, uh, what we see these people do, uh, never, don't worry about those things. I'm going to tell you something the Holy Spirit told me. Never, never judge yourself on trees that don't grow fruit. Because it's a physical and spirit, soulless thing to do, to, to judge yourself on, hey, God, look at all that. You know, look at them. Look at all that. Um, those guys here, they there, they whatever. And they look like they got so much and so many people. And we just look like we a little in number. We look like we such and such or we look like whatever it may be. Uh, and God told me, listen, never judge yourself off people that not trees that grow no fruit. You know, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't compare. You cannot compare a tree that grow fruit with a tree that doesn't. You can't compare that. A tree that grow fruit, why is he looking at a tree that doesn't? He can't, he can't, and comparing himself with that, he, you can't, you can't do it. it, it it's like it, it's downgrading yourself, you know, but it's a natural thing for people to look and say, wow, um, uh, so many people taking hold of this stuff. So many people are, are wanting this. And all it is is, is is separating the sheep from the goat. They want it because that's what's in their heart. And that's what their heart wants and their heart desires. And that's why they get sucked into their vortex. And some people are just deceived and they will get pulled out. And some people won't get pulled out because they want that. That was in their hearts. And like I said, that's separating the, uh, the sheep from the goats. And that separate the, the thorns from the grain. And there's people like that they want this they want those things they want to be a part of those things and that's one of the number one reasons that the, the, these the, that that these teachers these blind teachers are popping arrows everywhere and they're shooting with them and that's one that's one of the reasons why that happens because those people want those things those people want a god that's going to just be that god and that, and that's all they're going to get from that god and they want a God to work for them, not them work for him. And and they want a God to fulfill all their desires and whims. And they want an inheritance of a God that's in the power over everything and can control everything. And they can gather all this. And they want this inheritance of a God like that. But they don't want the heritage of who he is. And that's really what goes on. And that's what happens when you separate the, 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 the lamb from the goats. 
And that's one of the biggest things, you know, that people have to see that, you know, all this stuff is temporary. All this stuff is temporary. You know, I bought, I don't know how many cars I didn't had. I didn't bought cars, cars that I had cars that I really wanted. And I bought cars, you know what, they all gone. And then guess what? I got newer cars. I had two cars that I had two cars that both went out uh, actually last year. That I, and that both cars, you know, uh, both cars went out. And, and they were just and they went out. And you know what? God gave me two new cars. I had got two new cars. Um, God gave me two more. And, I, you know, and same thing with uh, I done lived in homes and townhomes, uh, townhomes, apartments. And I done had nice ones, really nice ones. I have a nice townhome I live in now, really nice one. And you know what? I'm going to have, I'm gonna have uh, something else. It's going to perish. You're going to move on to something else. That's what those things do. You know, you can have a nice wardrobe of clothes I didn't have. And you know what? Uh, when that wear out, you bought another wardrobe. It, it, those things are perishable. That's, they're, they're not to be worshipped up. They're not to be procrastinating on God's purposes and will for. Those things are perishable. They're going to give out. You're going to be in this this week. Uh, next, There's people that switch shoes, uh, you know, quick as, quick as you know, in, in one month. They didn't already wore and uh, bought three or four pair of shoes and, and, and probably only wore them a couple of times and already moving on to more shoes. Uh, those things, are, that's what they are. Those things are perishable. And there's people out here, like I said, they're, they're wanting these things. They're glorifying these things. They're picking these things over their own spiritual calling. They're picking these things over God manifestation on earth. They're rather having their own manifestation of physical uh, treasure and prosperity on earth than have God um, manifest his spiritual and that's what's happening, and we got to get our mind state out of that. Now, that, that's just the truth. Now, no one trying to tell you you have to be poor in the situation of, I know it's with prosperity preachers, the first thing a couple of them are going to want to say is that ministers or people like that want you to be poor. That's, that's, that have nothing to do with being poor. But in the same token, I tell you what, push come to shove, push come to shove, you'd rather be seriously rich in the kingdom and rich in the spirit and be poor in the flesh because you'll be way better off than being rich. And believe me, you way better off than being rich in the flesh and the earth, you fool, you rich as you can be. And spiritually, you poor and dusty and dirty. You don't want to be that because Jesus even showed in Revelation what that looks like. That's the, you know, even though you think, oh, you know, yeah, but look how terrible that looks. Notice that if they, you, you, you'd be better off being spiritually rich and full of spiritual treasure. And one is with God and eternal. You'd be way better off than that and have not a dime in your pocket than you would be having all the money in the world. And, and, and you know what? You lose, all, you lose everything. You know, spiritually, you have nothing. You're poor and disgusting. You have to have, you know how scary, and to me, you know how scary, and you know how sad, and how, to me, how scary, scary that is. You, I mean, you can imagine Jesus telling you this, like, to your face saying, hey, you this and that. I mean, that that is like the most... I mean, just me thinking about it now, it, it, it just breaks me up. You know, it, it scares me to death. You know, I, I mean, just thinking about him telling you, oh, you're poor, you're this. I mean, can you hear, imagine that? I don't think people even think about these things. Can you imagine being sitting in front of God and he's telling you these things? And you're face like, hey, you should. I mean, that's like, you, you know, I mean, you you better off filling at a job or filling at a career or like uh, being a football player, never winning the Super Bowl. You'd be better off in these things losing these things out and have God sit there and have to tell you stuff like this. It's like, Oh man. I mean, um, that's horrible, man. I mean, it's like, it's, I don't know what else you can compare to that. That's like the awful thing in the world. You know, it's like the awful thing in the world to have to say, Oh, you know, um, God put it, God put an S on my head. You know, uh, he wasn't, he wasn't satisfied. He put a, you know, I got an S of shame on my head and I got an L for failure and I got to walk around with this SF, you know, on me. Uh, and everybody knows that, you know, I'm in the kingdom. Everybody know I didn't do what I needed to do. Everybody know I'm just another one of these SF, you know, and, 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 and shame in that. And, and like I said, you don't want to be, you don't want to be in, you don't, no, 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 no. You don't want to be shame like that. You don't want to be put to shame and you don't want to, you don't want to be put to shame like that. You know, people act like, you know, they want to sit back and say, Oh, you got born again. So you won't be put to shame. Oh yeah, you will. If you don't grow up, you definitely will be put to shame. And you will be put to shame because you be you be considered a child that never grew. You like you you like you like a child that never grew. You know, it's like having a tree, a seed that you planted, but it never never grew, never took. You see, so you, you don't know. You know, you don't want to be that person. Um, 
um, you don't want to be that person, you know, um, that, that's like that. You don't want to be like Saul. Remember, Saul lost his calling. Saul lost his calling. And you don't want to be like this guy, you know, not at all. And you don't want to be like Esau either, you know, losing your birthright uh, for, 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 the, for, for a quick meal of the flesh that he could have went a day or two without even eating, you know, and he'd been, he, he wouldn't have died. So I'm going to die. He wouldn't have died. And, and, um, but, you know, you don't, you don't want to put yourself in those situations. You don't want to keep falling victim to these things. Uh, you want to grow. You want to go further. You want to fight. You know, you want to fight. You want to get stronger every level that God take you to. You want to, you, you want to get the realization to come through you that you know that you came from God and you shall return. You want to know that you will hear, you want to get the, the, you want to get the, um, the, the, the dream, the vision. You want to get the, uh, it to be confirmed that you know that God has a serious purpose for your life and you, you will fulfill that purpose. Not saying you've not saying, well, I, I stayed on, I sat at the dock for 25 years and this is what I did. I fulfilled my purpose. And no, no, that that's not what that means. God don't want you sitting on the high, and He don't want you sitting on the sidelines. He wants you in the game. You see, know that Jesus said the field is big. You know, this ain't this ain't, this ain't, ain't and we can't put nobody on the sidelines. You know, you know everybody need to get in the game. So for people to think they just sit around, oh, this this is all I, I this is all I did. It's like that's that, that's not what God wants you to do. And like I said, people a lot of time thinking that that's what they want. They want to do that Esau thing. Where they just want the physical blessing. Just bless me. Just make me rich on the earth. Just give me a bunch of grain and a bunch of wine and and and, and a bunch of this and a bunch of that. And 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 and, and you know, let my cows breed and 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 see, they, they they want stuff like this. Let me let me have these businesses. Let me have this money. Let me have all these things. And you know what? That's what they want to stick to. So because it's much easier to stick to that than to actually the alternative. And you notice how Jesus invited people to the wedding banquet. You notice that those people's excuses were well, they were worried about businesses. And they was worried about um businesses. They was worried about houses. They was worried about oh, I just I got somebody owing me money. They was worried about debt or collecting money. Um when you go to the old testament, God was uh, trying to uh have an army and it was people that was making excuses about oh I just built a house. I just uh you know, I just uh got married. So notice how God reject those people and say, hey, if that guy just got married, then listen, let, let him go be with his wife. He think he's going to die in battle and somebody's going to have his wife. And if he's going to build a house, let him go live in it because if he don't, he's going to think somebody's going to die and somebody's going to take his house. And we don't want these cowards with us. you know. And that's when it comes down to in that situation is that notice that it is people that's cowards because Revelation even tell you about that where it say the cowardly won't enter in the kingdom. Yeah, the cowardly won't enter the kingdom. And notice the cowardly won't enter the kingdom, not when they die to enter the kingdom. They won't enter the kingdom right now. And this is why so many people right now is not having that oneness with Jesus and tapping into it to the full capacity because they're cowards. They're too scared and cowards to go deal with him. Um, they're too scared to pick up their cross. Uh, some of them, like he said, the coward, uh, cowardly. Some people too scared to go through things. Some people too scared uh, to do those things. And if you're scared, then the only thing you need to fear from God is separation. That's the only thing we've ever seen uh, Christ Jesus afraid of. That's the only thing we've ever seen him afraid of. I didn't see him being afraid of anything. He wasn't afraid of nothing. I didn't see him afraid of anything. The only thing you ever seen him afraid of was separation from God. When he knew that the Father was leaving, he was separation. That's the only thing he was afraid of and the only thing that terrified him It was that separation from 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 god that's what he, he he didn't want that and so notice that he didn't want to think on his own he wanted to think the father to think to think uh think the thoughts the father to be his mind he 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 want his will he wanted the father will you see that's what he was afraid to get away from and we got to grow into that more and more every day all of us have to grow further and further in that to have that same mentality that's what we have to claim that's what we have to claim that we already had that we already had that we got to remember and reclaim that right there is to have that kind of fear of God. Not, Oh, you know, God will crush you like a bug. If you do this, not that. No, be, be afraid to be separated from the spirit, to be one with the spirit, to be afraid to go back to the soul and the flesh, not want to be afraid 
to separate from God, to be afraid not to hear from God, not to be connected to God, to be terrified of it. You see, that that's what you want to be. That's where you want to be, to, to be afraid to be disconnected from God. People now may not, they've sitting around for weeks and months at a time, never probably hear from God, hear from God every now and then, and they fine with that. No, 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 no. Be afraid to se- be separated, seriously, to be afraid to separate from God. From the Word of God, from the Spirit of God, to be afraid to separate, be separated from God. You see, to 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 say like Jesus did, I'm afraid. See, that's the only thing you ever see him afraid of. You didn't see him afraid of anything else but separation, and and because that was death, that was true death, true death of separation, spirit from spirit separated from the soul. And that's what true death is. You see, and so you don't. So when a person is not operating the spirit, what are they doing? Jesus said, "You gather with me," which you know, gathering means when in the spirit. Notice in the spirit, you're going to gather with Jesus, but in the flesh, once you come down into the flesh and the soul, notice what happens. Then he say, "You then if you're not with me, you scatter." So if you get away from the spirit, what are you going to do? Automatically, you're going to scatter. If you within the spirit, what you're going to do? You're going to gather. That's how it works. So you should fear, well, Jesus, I'm afraid to separate from you because if I do, then I'm going to scatter. And then I'm going to start, actually, when I do that, I'm going to start declining. But if I stay in the spirit, then I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to stay in the spirit that I'm going to gather and I'm going to increase. But if I get out of it, I'm going to fall. And, 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 and there's no other way around it. Once you get into the corner of mind, it's over. There's it, it, no other way. I mean, there's no way I'm in the corner of mind, I'm going to get out. It's not like that. You once you get into that carnal thinking and carnal mind, you are already behind enemy lines. You see, you're already behind enemy lines. You know, from that point there, it only can get worse. So you got to get back into the spirit, stay in the spirit. You know, stay full of the Holy Spirit. You know, you got to stay in the spirit. You see, you got to stay in the spirit because once you come down from the spirit or out of the spirit and go into the flesh, it's over for you. You forget about it. You're done. You're done. You're washed up. You can forget about it. So hopefully it's been. Hope I ain't sound too country, but you know I am from Texas. But hopefully this uh, this has been a really good teaching to you, and I hope that you take this and grow, and I hope this uh, really strengthens the elect out there and know that I'm praying for you and all the uh, other elect are praying for you, and that like I said, you will succeed. And for the ones who uh, for the ones who you know are going through some things right now. You know that we all going through the same things, and we're we all going through the same things. And remember that, no matter what you're going through, we all it's others of us that are going through the same thing. You see, and know that Jesus went through all these things and more. So, I like to say, what I always say: blessing and peace uh, be to you. This is Courtney Jones, and I am out. Hey everyone, we're going to take a quick commercial break that is sponsored by God Elect Ministry. Hey everybody, it's Courtney Jones of God Elect Ministry. And for all the people who want to receive Jesus in their heart and Lord and Savior right now, I want you to quote something with me. We're going to go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It's Romans chapter 10, verse 9. And it says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has risen him from the dead, you will be saved. And also go forward and say this, go further. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession, confession is made unto salvation. Now, if you're a person right now who you believe, you receive Jesus in your heart right now, this axiom in your heart right now, you also, you also believe that he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, he's been risen from the dead, you also believe that he is Lord. Now, as you just had quoted that scripture, I want you to understand something. It's something called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is a gift that is given to everyone who believes this. Everyone who believes that Jesus has been risen from the dead, that his blood washes us clean. He is our Savior, and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. As you confess that, I want you to understand that you can ask God right now for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is given to every believer. Every believer who believes this, you, you are, you are required to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is given to you as a gift. 
So remember, as you quote that, as you receive Jesus in your Lord, your Lord and Savior right now in your heart, as you quote this scripture, also ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, everyone, we're going to take a quick commercial break that is fun. Hey, Houston, Sprint wants to help you do all the things you love to do on your phone. Introducing our best unlimited plan ever. Get four lines of unlimited high-speed data, talk, and text for only $37.50 per line per month while on the Sprint network. No other national carrier has a better price for unlimited than Sprint. Stop thinking about your data and start using it. Switch to Sprint today. Visit a Sprint store or Sprint.com slash unlimited to learn more. Limited time offer, coverage, and offer not available everywhere or for discounted phones. Subject to credit and activation fees. Include taxes, surcharges, roaming, international, and premium content. Data deprioritization applies during congestion. Prohibited network use rules and restrictions. Supply.